Good day everyone. Welcome back to Science, Technology, and Society course. So today I'm going to discuss the uh, history of science and technology in the Philippines. So this uh, chapter has three lessons that we need to discuss. The first one is the um, pre-colonial history, colonial history, and the period since independence of the Philippines. So after this lesson, the students are expected to describe how science and technology in the Philippines changed over time, identify the influence of colonization to the science and technology of the country, and lastly, describe the huge role of education in the development of science and technology. So now let's begin with the pre-colonial period. This is the time before Spanish regime. Before Spaniards arrived in the Philippines, Filipino had civilization of their own. In fact, there was a scattered, self-sufficient communities during the time called Balangay. This, is, uh, this was named after Balangay, a small boat made by Filipinos. As also historians uh, believe that early settlers in the country were came from mainland Asia that uh, used is uh, simple tools to meet their needs. Uh, for the economy during the pre-colonial period, they produce uh, seashells, ornaments, and potteries of various design, which over time were replaced by imported uh, Chinese porcelain. They also use Karakowa for inter-island trades. So this is the graphical picture of Karakowa used by early Filipino traders. This show how trading happens during pre-colonial period. By the 10th centuries, coastal areas such as Manila, Mindoro, Cebu, Sulu, and southern Mindanao had more sophisticated technology compared to other areas due to their exposure to foreign trade and cultural influences. During pre-colonial period, agriculture was practiced throughout the country. Filipino were growing crops, raising animals, and producing wine, vinegar, salt, and uh, beef products. However, in um, more remote areas, Filipinos were still hunter-gatherers. People during this time live in wood, bamboo, and nipa houses. This is called uh, bahay kubo, while others made their houses on tree tops. For their religious belief, Filipino believe uh, in the immortality of the soul and in life after death. They also believe in the existence of several gods whom they worship and made offerings to according to rank. They also had their own system writing and measuring system and counted the years by moons and from one harvest to another. So this is the Laguna Copper Plate Encryption. Okay then, let's proceed to colonial period. Um, col colonization started when Spaniards headed by Ferdinand Magellan arrived in the Philippines in the 15th century. So Spanish uh, colonization began in 1521 and ended in 1898. In total, Spanish regime lasted for more than 300 years. Magellan landed on the island called Homonhon claiming the island he saw for Spain and naming them Islas de San Lazaro, he established friendly relationship or friendly relation with some of the local leaders, especially with Raja Humabon and converted some of them to Roman Catholicism. So that is the start of Spanish regime. So there are three uh, reasons for colonization. The first one is the God, the conversion of natives to Christianity, gold, the accumulation of gold and wealth, and the glory, supremacy of Spain over Portugal as superpower. The succeeding slides uh, show the more remarkable events and advancement during the Spanish regime. 
So the first one is the reduction system. This is strategy group part ng scattered barangay into fewer but larger and more compact town within the hearing areas of Charles Bells. So if you are living in remote area or part from the community, if you hear the bell ringing, you still part of the latter community. Then the Datus and their uh, hereditary successor serve as head of Cabezas de Barangay. Also, uh, tribute tax and forced labor were uh, practiced during this year. For education, Philippine colonial uh, education system was established with the help of the religious order. By this, the Colegio de San Ildefonso in Cebu and Colegio de San Ignacio in Manila were built in 19, uh, or 1595 and followed by Ateneo de Manila in 1859. Then, with the help of Dominicans, University of Santo Tomas and Colegio de San Juan de Latran were built in 1611 and 1640 respectively. This school were mostly accessible to elite or prominent people in the society. The content of these slides are the Filipino students during the Spanish era who took advanced studies in Europe. So we have uh, Jose Rizal who took uh, medicine and specialization in ophthalmology in Spain and Germany. Gaciano Apasible who took uh, medicine in Madrid. Antonio Luna for pharmacy in Madrid and Jose Alejandro took uh, engineering in Belgium. So for the medicine during Spanish era, several Spanish missionaries observed and cataloged and wrote about Philippine plants, especially those with, with, with medicinal values. Then in 1871, University of Santo Tomas opened the School of Medicine and Pharmacy where Leon Maria Guerrero, the father of Philippine pharmacy, graduated. For the economy of the Philippines during the Spanish era, Manila opened the shipping port to Asian countries. By this, agriculture products exportation was increased. Also, Spaniard occupants in Manila involved in galleon trade. In general, there was a little development in country's agricultural sector during the first two centuries of Spanish era. Now let's move on to American regime. American period marked the rapid advancement of science and technology in the Philippines. So, the contribution of the American regime to the Philippine science and technology were uh, one, encouragement and support of the government for an extensive education system, two, scholarship grants in science and engineering, three, organization and establishment of science research agencies, and lastly, the establishment of science-based public school. Specifically, the following activities paved the way for the development of science and technology in different sectors of the country. The Department of Public Instructions was uh, established in the country to produce school offerings, free primary education, with English as the medium of uh, instruction. A Philippine normal uh, school was put up to serve as training ground for Filipino teachers. Secondary schools were opened in 1902, followed by the establishment of other professionals and technical institutions, with later become part of the multidisciplinary university of the Philippines. Then, the private uh, or the enactment of the Private School Act or the Act Number 2076. Then, the creation and organization of the Bureau of Government uh, Laboratories, Bureau of Mines, Bureau of Health, Bureau of Forestry, Bureau of Agriculture, Bureau of Coast and uh, Geodetic Survey, Bureau of Plant Industry. Bureau of Industry or Animal Industry and the Weather Bureau. It also established the National Research Council of Philippine uh, Island or the NRCP. The American regime ended 
with its uh, economy having women agriculturally defined despite the higher educational opportunities given to Filipinos. Next, the Commonwealth period, the inauguration of the Philippine Commonwealth in 1935 marked the beginning of the country's transformation to a politically independent nation. The importance in the economy of promoting scientific development was acknowledged as reflected in Article 13, Section 4 of the 1935 Philippine Constitution. It states that the state shall promote scientific research and inventions, arts and letters shall be under its patronage. So these are the sum of the major contribution of Commonwealth period to the Philippine science and technology. The establishment of National Economic Council, National Power Corporation, National Development Company, National Abaca and Other Fibers Corporation, and the Bureau of Mines. Now, let's move on to the uh, period since independence of the Philippines. So, after the country regained the independence in 1946, the support for scientific research and development through education was continued. So, several state and even private universities and colleges were established and uh, reorganized. This is under the supervision of the Department of Education and Culture. Due to increased learning institution in the country entailed the birth of various science agencies of the government. So these were the Institute of Science in 1947, the establishment of uh, Institute of Nutrition also in 1947, the establishment of Science Foundation of the Philippines and the Commission on Volcanology. So, Institute of Science and Technology, this is former Institute of Science. This agency was born to address the problem of the country in terms of scientific researches. The main role of this agency is to improve the industrial activities and encourage technological development. So, after that, the Congress enacted uh, the RA 2067 or the Science Act of 1958 leading to the creation of National Science Development Board. So, NSB or NSDB responsible for making science development policies and coordinating the activities of various science institutions. In 1982, the NSDB was further recognized becoming the National Science and Technology Authority or NSDA with four Research uh, Development Council, namely Philippine Council for Agriculture and Resources Research and Development, or PCARD, Philippine Council for Industry and Energy Research Development, Philippine Council for Health Research and Development, and the National Research Council of the Philippines. Because of the various R&D councils, this increased the number of Philippine science institutions provided opportunities for local science manpower to conduct researches. Also, a national network of centers and excellence in basic sciences was then established to further improve science and technology in the country and its manpower. So here are the six new institutes that will help the R&D uh, councils. The National Institute of Physics, the National Institute of Geological Sciences, the National Institute of Natural Science Research, the National Institute of Chemistry, National Institute of Biology, and the National Institute of Mathematical Science. So on January 1987, by the virtue of Executive Order 128, the NSTA was elevated to full cabinet level. This converted the agencies to the Department of Science and Technology to meet the increasing demands for intervention of science and technology in the national development. Okay, now let's proceed to another topic, the Philippine inventors and their inventions. So scientists uh, greatly helped 
in the economic development of the country. In the Philippines, we have a number of renowned scientists and technologists whose works and discoveries have contributed to the progress of different industries. So in the next slides, I will introduce to all of you some of the Philippine fight in the, in the world uh, science and technology. So we have um, Dr. Pedro Mundo. He invented the medical incubator, and he is also the first Asian to have entered the prestigious Harvard University School of Medicine. Then we have uh, Gregorio Sara, a Filipino engineer who invented the video phone. Next is the inventor of fluorescent lamp, Mr. Agapito Flores. The inventor of the graphical user interface, Justadom Vatanao. Mr. Angel Alcala, the uh, inventor of artificial coral reefs. Mr. Roberto De Losario, the inventor of uh, Karaoke 195. Narciso Mosuela, the inventor of Super Calan. And last on the list is Mr. Pedro Flores, who invented Yo-Yo. Uh, Yo-Yo is, uh, or was officially invented for self-defense. It, it was used by Filipino against intruders or Spaniards before it became one of the most favorite toy of kids. So these are the reference for these slides. Before I end this video, I want to remind all of you that the Philippines is still the perfect place to live in despite having so much controversies in the Philippine government. All you need to do is focus on the people, focus on your family, and explore the nature. So thank you very much and uh, keep safe.